Hey hockey parents and hockey coaches, Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com and in this video I want to run you through an example workout taken straight from our youth in-season hockey training program. Youth athletes should be training differently than adult athletes. They've got different structures, different hormone levels, different emotional maturity, different mental maturity, and very different physical requirements for what it takes to maximize their athletic potential. Let's get into it. All right, kicking off this workout, we are going to do a superset between skater bounds and alternating anterior reaches. The first exercise is a skater bounds, and we're gonna do three sets of three per side here, and I want you to be as explosive as possible. The reason why we're only doing three jumps per side is because you never wanna lose that pop in your movement. You should be moving as explosively as possible on every single rep, and it's something you really just can't do, say for a set of 20 or 30. So be as explosive as possible. This is gonna help out with that lateral power, which is really going to help out with your acceleration on the ice. Once you've finished up your three jumps per side at the skater bounds, you're going to right away go into alternating anterior reaches. Now I know this one looks pretty simple, but looks can be deceiving. And this is also one of those weird exercises where the slower you move, the harder it is. And this is a great exercise to keep your hip, knee, and ankle in alignment, which is really good for structural balance of the body. But it's something that really helps youth athletes develop ankle stability. And ankle stability is one of the most important factors towards you being able to improve your edge work out in the ice. We're doing this exercise in between skater bounds because it's something that allows us to improve ankle stability and therefore our edge work, but it also just gives, gives kids active recovery in the process. A lot of kids don't want to stand around for a long rest period, so to mediate this, we utilize low-intensity recovery-based movements that are still hockey-specific that they can do in between their main working sets. To kick off the next superset, you're going to be moving into close grip push-ups. Just like Kevin showed you there, I want you to make a diamond with your hands and then place that diamond right near where your solar plexus is or just the bottom of your breastbone area. This is where we want our hand positioning because we want to primarily target the triceps with this exercise, which are a major muscle group to help keep you strong on the puck and win those puck battles in the corners and really just stay strong in front of the net as well. This is There's a lot of pressing going on on there and this strength really helps translate over to improved hockey performance and just overall positional dominance on the ice. Also, I really want to make note that if you can perform these push-ups with your knees off the ground, that is best as it's going to cause more force production in the upper body. But if halfway through the set, just like you see Kevin doing here, you have to put your knees down, that's fine. We're after quality, not quantity. So if you need to bring your knees down to do a quality rep, do so. Once you've finished all 10 reps of the close grip push-up, you're going to move into alternating forward reaching lunges. With the forward reaching lunge, you're going to do a standard lunge format where you're going to step forward, but this time I want you to reach all the way down close to your toes on every single rep. This is a great way to train both the lower body and the posterior chain at the same time. The posterior chain simply just represents the back side of the body, and that's the reason why I really like this exercise, because training the back side of the body without weights is very difficult to do. And since a lot of youth athletes don't even require weights in order to get an optimal training stimulus, it can be a little difficult in order to have exercise selection that's appropriate for improving the posterior chain. And the posterior chain is wildly important for things like agility and also shot power. So when we can hit both of these at the same time with one exercise, I am all for it, especially since it's something that requires a lot of coordination and proprioception, which is going to be great for youth hockey athletic development. Perform 10 reps per side here. 
Moving into the third superset of the workout now, we're gonna do an exercise called Supermans. Now there's two ways to perform the Superman. You can just hold that contracted position for an allotted period of time, or you can rep it out. In this workout, I want you to rep it out. We're gonna do 10 reps of that full posterior chain contraction, squeezing the glutes on every rep, squeezing the hamstrings on every rep, squeezing the middle and upper back on every single rep. Try and get as much tension as you can create on the back side of your body for the entire duration of the set. We need to train the posterior chain in order to effectively improve our hockey performance. And it's one of the most undertrained aspects in youth athletics today. Too many people are only doing push ups and sit ups and forgetting that there's an entire backside of the body that you need to have strong and athletic if you want to be the best hockey player you can possibly be. Once you've finished your Superman reps, you're gonna move right into the bicycle abs. This is a classic core exercise that I'm sure you're already familiar with. I want you to bang out 10 reps per side on this one because this is one of the rare exercises in the core training handbook that trains both the upper and lower abdominals as well as your internal and external obliques. The abdominals are important because they play a major role in something known as core anti-rotation, which helps keep you strong on the puck. But those internal and external obliques, they're important for rotation of the core and power expression. And this plays a big role in your shot power. So fully rotate on every rep, Keep your legs nice and low to the ground like you see Kevin doing here and try and not stop once until you've completed all reps. Last but not least, we're moving into the crossover step up. You can see right away here that since Kevin's crossing over his leg and stepping up with his outside leg, how much lateral power and lateral muscular activation that's going to require in order to keep that movement going strong. I want you to perform five reps per side here, but stay on the same side until you've completed all five reps before switching to the next side. This lateral power activation, this is something we also trained in the very first exercise of the workout with our skater bounds. And the reason why we're hitting it twice, especially during the season, is to keep you fast. A lot of youth athletes slow down after the first two to three months as the in-season wears on and the grind wears on. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna keep these muscle groups nice and strong. We're also gonna keep the mobility of the hips through a movement like this nice and open so that your stride length and your stride frequency are optimal out in the ice. Thanks for watching our youth in-season hockey training workout taken straight from the brand new youth in-season hockey training program. If you liked that video, smash the thumbs up button and also subscribe to our hockey training channel. And if you want access to your free MVP package for youth hockey training, click on the link in the comment section below.